Okay, so you bought a ticket to participate in this event and you don't know yet, but you're in for a journey. And I'm going to take you on a eight minute journey into the invisible world of fingerprints. And during this time, you will adjust your eyes and hopefully you will develop a super sight which will enable you to actually see more clearly and unveil the secrets that fingerprints have hidden for over a century. We all know what fingerprints are for, so they're used for suspect identification, the reason being that each one of us is unique, not only philosophically speaking, but also in terms of our own fingerprints. And what currently is done is to dust for fingerprints on crime scene surfaces, to enhance them and visualise them, they can then be lifted off the surface, a scan image is taken and then compared in a database in the effort to catch the criminal and find the suspect match. However, this process has got a few shortcomings. The technique that is used uh, to announce fingerprints, and dusting is just one of them, depends on a number of factors that the CSI has to take in consideration. And at the best, you get one image of the fingerprint, and you better hope that's a good image. Unfortunately, in some cases, in a few cases, this image is not good enough for database comparison and match, especially if fingerprints, like often happens, uh, are smudged or distorted. So, wouldn't it be great to have a technology which enables us to see these little ridge characteristics more clearly and to provide an image of the fingerprint, enhancing your chances to find a match. But also, a technology that could tell us something more, to look beyond the physical characteristics of the ridge pattern. And in doing so, are then fingerprints a new world to discover and explore? The journey begins now. We believe that the technology that is able to do so is moldy mass spectrometry imaging, a very complicated name for an incredibly fascinating technology. This technology was born in 1997 to map molecules in intact tissue sections. So some scientists use it to actually see where the drug goes in the body once it is administered. Some other scientists use it to actually see the cancer developing at very early stages. And we at Sheffield Alam University developed the concept and the methodology enabling this technique to be applied to the analysis of Latin finger marks. In its classical implementation, which we have further refined to be applicable at real crime scenes, the finger mark is covered in a small organic molecule, which we will call the matrix. Then a laser will be fired in a raster fashion mode, and every time the laser fires, we acquire a mass spectrum that you see there on the left. Now, a mass spectrum is a collection of all the molecular species that are present in the finger mark and that we could detect in that particular point. By doing this, you will end up having a collection of spectra, an average spectra, and each one of those spectrum actually is the representation of the local, local molecular composition at XY coordinates. What can you do now? Well, you can just interrogate the software now, and if the video can start, please, you can ask the software, well, show me where each one of those molecules is distributed in the finger mark. And obviously, in doing so, you generate multiple images of the finger mark, not just one. Some of them won't be very good, but some others actually give you a very good rich details. So what you can do, you can stitch images together and try to improve the quality of the fingerprint for suspect ID purposes, or you can just flick through the different molecules and just choose the image that you think has got the best quality. I can stop the video, thank you. So in addition to this, so we have solved the problem of the clarity of the fingerprint. But what else can we do? I think we hear very often the, the sentence, a picture that's worth a thousand words. 
what is the potential, what is the value if we have a chemical image of a fingerprint? What clues can we get? What story can you tell? So I have said that when we fire the laser, what, we, what happens is molecules being absorbed and detected. And we are now at a stage where we can detect lots of different molecules. We can detect proteins, peptides, fatty acids, and a variety of small organic molecules. And these are naturally present in your fingerprints. These molecules are well known to be able to act as biomarkers. And biomarkers are indicators of uh, pharmacological response, uh, pathological processes, a biological state, thus discriminating individuals. So it is reasonable enough to hypothesize that in a non distant future, we will be able, by looking at these molecules and that their increased or decreased presence, whether or not from a fingerprint we can tell the dietary habits, whether a person is a vegetarian or not, we, we will be able to tell about presence of diseases and even gender. I'm not crazy, this is possible, we do have evidence that this is possible. And this is incredibly important because as you can appreciate, we can provide now crucial investigative leads to solve the case more rapidly and efficiently and in a more informed way. What else we can do? Anything that comes in contact with your fingertips is transferred in your fingerprints. So this is just an example to show you that if the suspect is handled cocaine, we are actually able to see cocaine in his fingerprints and therefore adding more intelligence to the case under investigation. In another example, we are able to say whether or not the suspect <laughs> has, <laughs> has handled, um, well, has actually used the condom in an alleged rape. And we can do this for a number of condoms and potentially even pinpoint the brand of condom that is used. Again, this provides more than a circumstantial evidence to the case up in, uh, under investigation. I want to leave you with a story, um, the coffee experiment. Now, I'm Italian and I've lived in this country now for three years. And from this experiment, I've learned that I've completely lost my ability to cope with a cup of espresso coffee. And I'll show you that in a second. So what I did is I was very brave and I drank a cup of coffee. I took my own fingerprints at 10 minutes from the consumption and I could see a very nice signal of caffeine coming through my fingerprints. I still look like a normal human being up there. So no symptoms of caffeine really kicking very much. At 30 minutes, hair up, not a good sign for me, I know what that means. And as you can see, the signal of caffeine has actually increased. So there is um, an increased presence of caffeine in my fingerprints. And as you can see, I start multitasking. <laughs> At 60 minutes, the presence of caffeine is increased even more, and I look psychotic. And now I can demonstrate that I can't cope with a cup of coffee, espresso coffee, any longer. The bottom line of this is that what else we can do is anything that you ingest and that is excreted through sweat is visible in your fingerprints. Or we can tell a story from a fingerprint. So, are fingerprints a new planet to explore? My personal answer is yes, and the prospect of being able to con contribute to, towards people's safety and well-being is my strongest drive in pursuing this research. Like any other speakers, and I think like you all here, I'm a firm believer that each one of us can make the difference with what we're given, with what we are, with what we learn, with the people, using the people and interaction with the people. And that is just my little way to make the difference. Thank you.